This is an I Am Listening original podcast. All of this then creates those additional opportunities for the town, for the local residents, which can never be a bad thing. Population is growing. We do need more houses. And this isn't something that's going to go away. And we need to be flexible and recognise that and take advantage of that and the opportunities that they then will provide. Welcome to the Property Podcast with Wards and me, Gary Wilson, the monthly podcast where I'll share with you all the latest Kent property news, as well as speaking with industry professionals to offer advice and tips that will hopefully help make your house moving journey a little less stressful. This podcast is brought to you by Wards. As Kent's local independent estate agent, Ward utilise years of experience and expertise to promote your property in the best possible light to the largest possible audience. For more information, receive an online valuation in less than 30 seconds or book an in-person appraisal of your property with us today. Head over to wardsofkent.co.uk to find out more about our unique approach. Welcome to episode eight of the Property Podcast with Wards. Today, we're going to be talking about locations, specifically locations in Kent with our special guest, Jennifer Woolley, who is branch partner at Wards. Morning, Jennifer, first of all, and thank you for coming on. Morning, Gary. It's really good to be here. The sun is shining. It's a good day. It is. Let's hope we're going to have another load of great info and handy advice for people. So to kick things off, Can you give us a bit of an overview of Kent? Because it is all about Kent, this one. So uh, as a whole, what makes it a unique region for property buyers and renters? What do we need to know about Kent? Well, Kent is an attractive region for several reasons. I mean, many areas in Kent are within an hour's train ride into London, making it the ideal choice for those who work in London but prefer a more rural place to live. And due to its growing popularity, it makes the area an attractive option for property investors. You've got the perfect balance between rural and urban living. You've got the tranquility of the countryside while still having access to vibrant urban areas in Kent, such as Maidstone or Canterbury. Kent's also great for families with excellent schools and educational institutions. We've got great primary, secondary schools, private schools, grammar schools, and it's the perfect balance of living rurally, still having those urban living and amenities at your doorstep. And it's also known for its agricultural produce. I mean, we grow fruit, wine, cider, and there are plenty of farm shops and local markets allowing residents to enjoy fresh, locally sourced food, which I think is a very attractive thing for locals and residents. Yeah, it's a big thing right now. Uh, One thing you haven't mentioned is the seaside, of which we have more than anyone else. So with regards to the coast, what are some of the most desirable coastal towns towns and villages in Kent and why are they attracting interest at the moment? I think Kent has a beautiful coastline along the English Channel. Towns like Whitstable and Deal are particularly sought after. Broadstairs, it's known for its beautiful beaches. You've got sandy bays and Botany Bay is probably one of my personal favourites. Who doesn't like a long dog walk along the beach following with a nice cold pint in the pub or a (laughs) traditional chippy? It's the idyllic sort of let's live by the sea sort of lifestyle. Another favourite would be Folkestone. It's got plenty of independent cafes and boutique shops, street food stalls and bars on the Harbour Arm. And most coastal towns have a thriving artistic community, adding to its cultural appeal. And Deal has a really rich maritime history, attracting all the history buffs. So, yeah, I think Kent's coastline in general is a will always be a very sought-after place to live. Yeah, and then there's the kind of east-west divide. Obviously, you've talked about the benefits, shall we say, uh, the certain plus sides, if that's what you need, of uh, being able to get into London, which is obviously easier to the part of the county that's closer to it. But what else distinguishes east and west Kent when it comes to the property markets and the lifestyles that people might be buying into if they move to either one? I think... West Kent offers a more suburban and commuter orientated lifestyle. It tends to have perhaps a more urban sort of living within the towns, more amenities. And it's also got a a picturesque landscape of woodland and parks, as well as the direct commuter links within these towns of West Kent. And I think East Kent emphasises 
coastal living experience, art and a more relaxed sort of atmosphere. Yeah, it's got a lot going for it, wherever you choose, really. Uh, the Medway towns as well, especially, have seen a lot of redevelopment in recent years. So what's the current property landscape in places like Rochester and Chatham? How might that be a little bit different to other places in the county? Well, I grew up in Medway. I lived in Chatham and I went to school in Rochester. I think it continues to develop, even as I was growing up and now and in the future. And I think the towns have a really diverse property market, offering opportunities for all kinds of of buyers. Chatham is a main retail area of Medway. You've also got the maritime area, including the historic dockyard, um, the maritime estate on St Mary's Island, with houses, flats, offices and the university campus, and Rochester known for historic centre with Rochester Castle and Cathedral. I think there are new build developments in the surrounding areas and with the amenities and historic sites as well as the transport links, the property landscape in these towns will continue to grow. It's a real vibrant buzz about the whole place at the moment. So how does the property market in Kent compare to neighbouring counties like Sussex and Essex? And what factors should buyers consider when making cross-border comparisons? I think the property markets in Kent, Sussex and Essex share some similarities due to the proximity to London. Kent's well known for its commuter towns and its relatively easy access to the capital. And that's driven demand for properties within Kent. But Sussex offers a mix of coastal towns like Brighton, along with the countryside and areas like the South Downs with diverse property market ranging from beachfront apartments to estates. And I think Essex attracts more first-time buyers or families and those looking for value for money. Each of these regions has its own unique appeal and caters to a variety of different preferences within buyers. And I think the choice between them often depends on factors of what the buyer needs, like your budget, commuting needs, preferred type of environment. Do you want coastal? Do you want rural? Do you want suburban? And their lifestyle priorities. I would advise to thoroughly research the area and consider your individual requirements when deciding which region to live in and what best suits your property needs. Additionally, property market conditions change over time, so it's always good to stay updated with the latest developments and trends when comparing these regions, because from one year to the next, it could could change. And what you're looking for in life and what property you want, do you want a big garden, do you want more house, do you want to be able to be five minutes walk through the beach on an evening, you've got to take all this into consideration when comparing where you want to live, and especially if you're moving from one area to the next. Now, obviously, uh, just throwing an extra question here, as you just said, it's a liquid thing, it moves, it evolves. But if it came down to cash, and I'm always interested, I think most people are kind of interested, even if it might not have a, a big impact, there might be other things that will make the decision for them. But when it comes down just to money, compared to a, a very similar place, let's say, in Sussex, with similar amenities and compared to a place in Essex, which could be very, very similar as well. What what kind of price differences are there, if you know? I mean, I know you're, but you're based in Kent, so I might be asking a question that you don't have those stats or you don't have that at your fingertips. I was just curious to know how Kent compares cash-wise. Do you get more for your money? Do you get less for your money on a sort of like-for-like? Like? And I know like-for-like like is difficult when you're talking about whole counties. Yeah, it is difficult when you're talking about whole counties because it can vary so massively, even between, you know, being five minutes up the road. Um, Even in the same village, one road could be worth significantly higher in property value than another. But I would say that there are certain areas within Kent that are probably a lot more affordable than others. And um, I think comparing county-wise, Essex, I would say there are perhaps some more areas within Essex that are more affordable compared to those in Kent. Right. OK. Thank you for answering that, because uh, uh, it was a bit of a curveball, really. But I'm always just, when it comes down to the cash, I'm always like, oh, I wonder if you get more value for money. (music) 
Now, when it comes to unique homes, obviously the TV shows that are huge, uh, and particularly the ones I love, it's usually unique homes that they're talking about. How does Kent compare and uh, how does it stack up when it comes to people looking for unique homes? Perhaps they're looking for something historic, some kind of heritage. What's particularly noteworthy for potential buyers on that front? I think this is where Kent really does come into its own. There are so many historic and heritage properties throughout Kent and a various array of different historical properties. You've got um, grade two listed manor houses, uh, grade two listed cottages, oast houses, barn conversions. Um, you can even find apartments within large manor houses. You've got Preston Hall in Ellsford, a grade two listed manor house dating back to 1102. And that was converted into these lovely apartments. Um, so, yeah, I think Kent in itself, you, you never have to look far anyway to be able to find that unique historical property that you're after. If character is your thing and you love the wooden beams look then I think Ken really is probably your best starting point to find that house with those unique quality and charm. Lovely. Now, one thing that you try and keep track of when you're moving is what might be developed, redeveloped, what infrastructure might be coming in or has just come in. I kind of think of the international stations, which are just now uh, places to go and watch trains go past rather than actually stop in Kent, which is uh, <laughs> just one of those awful things. But what upcoming infrastructure projects might be happening, what, develop what developments might be happening that could influence uh, property value in Kent, let alone where people might choose to be. is what, what, what do we need to know? What big stuff is happening? There are new build developments being built all over Kent. I think, you know, you could even extend that to all over the UK. We've seen a rise in the number of new build developments upcoming. And I think one of the good things about these new build developments is that they often come with infrastructure improvements, such as road upgrades. And these improvements can make the area more attractive and even increase property values. They can attract investment and business activity to the area, leading to economic growth, increasing demand for housing within that area, and then in turn, the property values for both the new build developments, new build estates and the existing dwellings. However, overdevelopment with an excessive number of new builds, especially in a concentrated area, may negatively impact property values by creating a, a crowded or less desirable environment to live, not to mention the competition and pressure to then lower property values and advertise both the new builds and existing homes at a lower price um, due to the competition. But usually I find that that's in short term where if an overdevelopment has happened, that property values may drop, but short term um, Whenever you're looking to move, if you are concerned about upcoming projects or infrastructure developments, then it's always a good idea to contact your local agency who can provide insight and make into the potential impact on property values regarding you know any of those upcoming developments. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things with the house building, obviously, is that you ask someone, should there be more houses? They will say yes. Uh, you say, well, we're going to build some just down the road. And they'll say no. <laughs> and, and of course, the stories that everyone talks about are the ones uh, that have either had negative impacts or might have negative impacts. But as you say, important to remember that if things are done well and everyone's playing the game properly – New schools might arrive, new doctor surgeries, all kinds of facilities that everyone can benefit from could be part of that as well. Uh, it's not exactly. just bad news putting pressure on what's already there. No, not at all. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the time it creates so many new opportunities, so many new job opportunities. And also within these developments, even throughout infrastructure projects in Kent, the, I find the government are often um, creating skills schemes and that you've got the keep Maidstone moving schemes aiming to reduce the congestion and ease traffic 
within the areas such as Maidstone as well as across other towns in in Kent. So, yeah, I think you'll always have the argument of there's another new build development coming and it's just on my doorstep and how is this going to affect me and how is it going to affect the roads? How is it going to affect the drains? How is it going to affect my commute into work? But a lot of the time is part of the planning approval of these developments the impact that it has on the local residents is very much taken into consideration. These things are thought about. These things have um, solutions and plans in place to ensure that the local residents are protected with um, their travel time and how busy it's going to be and will there still be places in the local schools? Do they need to then put in a new primary school or secondary school? Would another local corner shop be beneficial to that area and like you said all of this then creates those additional opportunities for the town for the local residents which can never be a bad thing population is growing we do need more houses and this isn't something that's going to go away and we need to be flexible and recognize that and take advantage of that and the opportunities that they then will provide ask our experts one of the big things about new houses at the moment Uh, it's just been a huge news story um, is trying to lower environmental standards so that they can or at least offset environmental impacts so that they can build a load of houses uh, that would have maybe got caught up in red tape and stuff like that there's been a big argument about all that kind of stuff so the green thing is foremost in a lot of people's minds and uh, with that in mind our ask the expert question sent in from one of our listeners relates to that i'm looking at property with a focus on sustainability and green living are there any eco-friendly or energy efficient property developments in kent that stand out for you Yes, there are lots of eco-friendly developments in Kent and there's a real good number of them and I think they're easily found just with a swift Google if that's what you're looking for. You've got developments in Sittingbourne, in Ashford, in Rochester um, that have projects that focus on creating a carbon neutral community and a lot of new build developers now focus on making sure their homes are as energy efficient as possible. They're installing energy efficient appliances in the kitchens. They're using reusable energy sources like solar panels. Um, I've also heard of some developers talking about no longer fitting gas inside their houses and concentrating on air source heat pumps and um, electric. I think if you go and visit some of these new build developments now, you'll find that a lot of them are seeking to be eco-friendly, energy efficient, installing car charging points on the driveways, installing solar panels on the roof. Um, So I think buyers looking to reduce their carbon footprint um, will easily be able to find a great, lovely, new, eco-friendly house. Or on the flip side, if it's not a new build that you're after, there are existing eco-friendly communities within Kent that go out of their way to provide sustainable energy within that community, um, sustainable living even within that community. And I think that's a really good, healthy, way of looking for a new property I think that's important so great answer to the question and uh, and and good news that there is that range of thought that's gone into the uh, eco living aspect of things which is obviously so so important so finally your last chance I think here to I think and you've done a great job and it's all been very fair to kind of sell Kent, I guess, to people who might be listening outside of the county right now or moving across the county. Obviously, like you've talked about, there's lots of very regional differences, seaside and rural living and uh, city living, really, all within Kent. Um, What kind of advice do you have for people that might be thinking of coming here or moving across the county? I think if you haven't done so already, you really ought to. I've lived all over England. I've lived in the northwest, I've lived in Kent, I've lived pretty much everywhere. (laughs) And I think for me personally, as well as the picturesque, idyllic, tranquil, 
lifestyles that Kent can provide in glorious settings and scenery, both countryside, woodlands, natural parks and the coastal areas and magnificent seaside towns. The weather is amazing. You know, it's it's sometimes comparable to, you know, places in Europe and other places further afield in the world and abroad. Our, Our weather in Kent is definitely not to be missed. And I think if you are considering moving over, especially from a different region of the UK, visit the area that you're thinking of moving to multiple times, preferably at different times as well. Visit it in the day, visit it at the weekend, in the evening, and you'll get a real true idea about what the area is like and if it suits the lifestyle you're looking for. Research the area, learn about the local amenities and proximity to essential services like like schools and hospitals and shopping centres. If you've got children, does the local school that you're intending on sending your child to have places? Does the cost of living within that area suit your budget? Take into account the rental and mortgage payments, utilities, council tax, transportation costs. It's going to cost me this much to drive to work every day. It's going to cost me this much on the bus. This will be my train fare. Take all of this into consideration. Any sort of expenses that might arise through living within that area. Look at the crime rates in the area to gauge the overall security. Consider the logistics of hiring removal companies. I think a great tip as well, actually, is to take advantage of all of our technology nowadays and social media and connect and network with the locals. A lot of towns have their online groups that will talk about the village and the community and that's a great insight to connect with local residents on these online forums to get advice from people already living in the area. What is there to be aware of? What's it like coming from people that already live there? By thoroughly researching and planning you can have a more informal decision and have a smoother transition when moving to a new area. Absolutely. I do think uh, any excuse to have an evening in the pub, but it certainly is a great idea to maybe uh, arrive at uh, what might be your new local and just see what goes on there, see what the people are like, hear them in conversation, talk to them. Uh, It's really great advice. Well, thank you once again, our special guest this week on the podcast, Jennifer Woolley, branch partner at Wards. Thanks for sharing all your knowledge, your first-hand knowledge as well, which is so key, and your expertise with us today. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me. It's been great talking to you. Well, don't forget then that it's always a good idea to consult with a financial advisor, solicitor, estate agent, or all of the above to help you navigate the home buying process and answer any additional questions you might have. And don't forget all our previous episodes of the Property Podcast with Wards are available at i m-listening.co.uk and the final episode of season one of the property podcast with wards will be out next month see you then and make sure you hit the subscribe button thanks for listening to the property podcast with wards if you'd like more information on the subjects that we've covered in today's episode just head over to the wards website at wardsofkent.co.uk Or you can follow us on our social media channels. You can check out our latest episodes at www.im-listening.co.uk or wherever you listen to your podcasts. This has been an I Am Listening exclusive podcast. For more information, head over to our website, im-listening.co.uk.